Hey everyone, how are we? Um, I'm not sure how much time we've got together today and um, things are a little bit chaotic and we are in a different room and this is the office um, and it's just a little bit more space to sit down and talk to you guys. Um, first of all, uh, I guess I should apologise, I've not uploaded anything for about two weeks now. First week was purely I had no voice, um, I was suffering from a cold flu thing um, and it would literally been like 20 minutes of me trying to talk and not achieving an awful lot. Um, so I just thought I'd give it a break, plus I'd been in bed for most of the week and not a lot had happened. Um, the second week um, I took a weekend out with some friends and I just had a bit of, um, I guess relaxation but it was very manic. We went up to London for the weekend, I'll go into that in a bit. Um, and by the time I got back I was just exhausted um, and so didn't really do much and went to bed quite early um, to recover. Um, but there's, as I say, there's quite a lot to catch up on. I'm not sure how much time we'll have together before my parents get back. They're out visiting uh, my great aunt at the minute, so they could be back at any point. And I had to finish off ironing and things. As I say, madness here. Um, but hey, it's Christmas. That's what Christmas tends to lead to. Um, and in a couple of weeks' time, it will be so worth it. So what has been happening? Um, well, there have been some incredibly tough times. And I'm not going to say that... I'm over them because I'm not. I've acknowledged them and that's I suppose the first step to it. Um, I'm just working through it in my head how best to sort through them and I know that sort of next year has got to be, sounds a cliche, but it's got to be the year that counts for me. Um, I've kind of forgotten what we've covered in the other videos so forgive me if I cross over things and to be honest though there's been no views, there's no been not been any comments so that won't matter, this is all for me to kind of reflect and think about what's happened. So last week I was in a really good place and I thought I was ready to tack a little um, and then this week which I kind of thought might happen, we had our Christmas party, it all came crashing back down. Um, so situation with one of my best mates that we've spoken about before. Um, he came and apologised to me, said he was worried um, and that things would be fine between us and he cared. Well, you know, saying and doing are two completely different things and I don't quite think he comprehends that in his head. Um, so things haven't really gone according to a plan, things aren't back to normal and I honestly, hand on heart, don't think they ever will be. Um, which is sad because he is one of my best mates but, you know, time, maybe it's time to just move on. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, I've had some really dark times. My medication has been upped, um, and I'm just trying to get back into the whole sleeping pattern thing, which is more difficult than it sounds. Um, so I'm pretty much tired all the time. Uh, work has been brilliant, my manager and my senior. Um, they are so lovely. and uh, We now have a traffic light system, so I raise them. <laughs> uh, non-existent red flag if there's issues and, and I did that on Friday because I just got to the point where enough is enough um, I will land up doing something very silly if I don't take a step back and, and realise what, what what life is worth um, and that's re-evaluating a lot of things um, and I guess this kind of came about from last weekend. So last weekend I went with one of my very good friends and her sister and another one of her friends off to London on the Friday. We went up there because it was her sister's 18th birthday and my mate used to live in London and promised her sister that as soon as she was 18 she'd take her up and show her how a London night out goes. Um, so that's what we did. We went up on the Friday, as I said, stayed in a beautiful Hilton, um, which upgraded us with many thanks to them. Um, all paid for by their parent, by her dad, um, and on the Friday night we went across, had dinner at Byron's, um, and then went and saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is an absolutely fantastic show. Um, it's not going to be in London for very long, so um, head down there really quickly. Um, but really fantastic show. It's more based on the original, so not the Johnny Depp, um, which I'm... Um, you know, shoot me now, um, I'm not the biggest fan of the Johnny Depp one. Um, it was just a little too kooky for me, and not how it should have been. So, the West End was a really good show. Um, from there we went back to the Hilton, had a bit of an early night, and then on the Saturday we headed down to Winter Wonderland, which brilliant. If you love Christmas, head down there, make sure you do. Um, every year it's just better and better. 
Um, we then shopped the whole of Oxford Street, which is a massive task. I think we did about 19,000 steps. Um, two of the girls had their Fitbits on um, to just to, to record that. Um, we then went back to the hotel, had a bit of a nap because we are getting old. Um, and then we went across to Electric Ballroom and Propaganda, um, which if you've not been there, is a very different kind of um, night out. It's 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 um it's in two halves. So upstairs is more your mainstream radio kind of music that you would hear now, and downstairs is your old classics that, that I grew up to, which is why I love it so much. It's like Kings of Leon um, and things like that, just a little bit alternative, which makes it a really good night out. Um, and we just went down there. We had a few drinks and we just danced a bit. Um, unfortunately, we did leave a little bit early, um, but we knew that. We would have Thursday, so we were sort of we were quite happy to go a little bit earlier. So I'm just listening out to um, the cars that are happening to see whether it's my parents coming back or not. Um, I don't think it is. Um, so yeah, it's a really good weekend, and and it was for someone like me who kind of growing up when I was at university, I was in very big relationships. I didn't really go out and have fun with my mates and a lot, um, so I missed out on that. Um, I'm just getting my head around, you know, what it is to have fun with your friends at the minute. I mean that was a real eye opener and you know to anyone that is in a relationship that can be very heavy, um, again I keep saying I'm going to do something on that because I think it would be good for me to get it out, I'm going to look through that in the new year. Um, I just realised how much I missed out on growing up um, and I know I'm only 26, there is plenty of time to be doing that, don't get me wrong, I know that, um, but I don't want to miss out on anything um, for anyone anymore, I guess it's time to be a little bit selfish, there's nothing wrong in that. So this week we head back to work, um, we're, everyone's getting ready for Christmas um, and Thursday was our Christmas meal out. I say meal out it wasn't, so it was in the Southampton Oceana, I don't know why I say it like that, it's Oceana, um, and we had one of the rooms upstairs with um, with a group of us um, where we had just a buffet and a few drinks and then they opened the whole club up for the rest of B&Q to come down to um, and we just danced the night away. I don't know how much I drank, there are some interesting photos of me. I just needed to sit down so I sat on the bathroom floor for 20 minutes. There was no toilet involved before you think anything like that, which my mother did and I did get told off for that. Um, but hey ho. I had an absolutely amazing night with some very, very good friends, but unfortunately um, it was very much ruined by the end of the evening by the so-called mate who says he really cares. Um, and yet he spent the whole evening walking away from me, which was very awkward for everyone else. We were in such a quite close um, friendship group uh, that it was quite awkward for everyone else and I just got to the point by halfway through the evening I thought I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have fun I'm gonna have a few drinks I'm gonna have a good evening with my mates out and that's what I did unfortunately to watch him lingering in the background keeping an eye on me because he was concerned about me and um, didn't really assist in that um, and we were about to share a taxi home with uh, one of my mates. They were on the dance floor, Becky was stood on the side. Um, she sat down there, I said, I'm gonna go just try and talk to him and speak to Shelley, see where she wants to go. Headed down there and he walked off. And if you care about somebody, you don't just walk off. Um, to which point I said, Shelley, I need to get out of here. I've had my fun now, it's getting to me. I need to go home. Um, so we were about to leave. Um, I went back up to my mate and I, by this point, I'd drunk too much. I knew I was being boisterous and I went, I just want to get out of here. Um, and my mate said to sit there, I'm going to talk to him. It got a little bit heated, I'm not going to lie, I did expect, um, I did expect something to happen, but he was marched over to talk to me, to which point he hugged me and he said he cared very much, he hoped I'd had a good evening, I looked like I had, um, and that he could no longer look after me, and that hit me in that, I never asked him to look after me, I asked him to be a friend to me and they are two very different things. Um, I said to him before, I don't expect a lot from him, he has his own girlfriend, he has his own life, but when he knows how dark times can be for me and he's had those kind of dark times, you kind of think he would be able to associate it a little bit more, um, but apparently not. Um, prime example is our senior this week, she unfortunately had got, um, she scratched her cornea, she came into work looking very sorry for herself, sunglasses on, and I promptly said you need to go to the hospital and get it checked out. Um, I unfortunately couldn't take her because I was due to be at the doctors, so another member of our team took him, um, they took her and we just were sort of kept up to date. Um, she's on antibiotics, she'll be fine, um, her sight will be fine, don't worry. Um, 
but the next morning he came round knowing I had a doctor's appointment and it was quite a big doctor's appointment I don't want to go into the ins and outs of it right now um, he completely he said morning and then blanked me and said to Shirley oh my god are you okay and that hurt now I know that sounds really selfish please don't get me wrong and I've apologized to Shelley for me thinking that um, but it hurts when your best friend knows that you could have had a doctor's appointment that was life-changing and he doesn't ask how you are or how it went and he still hasn't to, to this day um, it hurt um, and I, at no point I, and I said to him I don't expect him to look after me I don't expect to want him to worry about me 24 7 I know he has his own life um, but yeah he said to me I can't look after you to which my answer was I never asked you to and I never expected you to and he just repeated it and walked away which upset me um, and I burst into tears and I was marched to a taxi and back to Becky's because I was staying at hers um, and it ruined my night and I took Friday I, pro I went to work slightly drunk I'm not going to lie that was not the best plan but you know when you need to let off steam you just sometimes you have to do it um, I went to work, I sort of plodded through the day and it got to about 11 o'clock and I had to raise my red flag because I was in pieces him walking away wasn't him walking to, away from me that evening it was him walking out of my life because I'm at a point where I need people I can depend on You know when I'm having a shit time to pick up the phone and just send me a message to say are you okay or when things are too much at work they walk me away from my desk and say it's okay it's just a job and who cares whether there's enough mirrors on the shop floor or or whatever it is there are bigger things to worry about in life so I sat with my boss for about 20 minutes just discussing why I think so little of myself and yes it stems from a very early age and being in and out of relationships where I was treated like absolute rubbish and I know I have to get my self respect back because if you don't love yourself if you don't like yourself how can anyone else I absolutely despise myself I hate myself so much sometimes So I kind of then sat there Friday thinking, I need to reevaluate. I don't want to run away again. That's what I did when I moved to Plymouth. But things are good for me and my family. I'm not I'm not giving that up. So what else do I need to change? Well, my workplace is one because you can't be in the place where you're with somebody 24-7, or not quite 24-7, um, and you are truly besotted by him I suppose I rely on him way too much um, and yet nothing would ever happen between us but equally I said to them that I can't watch him throw his own life away because of some other people in there and um, so I said to my boss well how well, he said to me how can I help you? you you bring his name up all the time how can I help you to forget about him and I said you can look after him and it's at that point that I realized that I know what I need to do now. I need for him to be in the environment that I'm in with people who look after me, make sure I'm okay day to day and push me. So I have to move him into my team. But if I do that, I can't be there. But I don't want to be there anymore. I need my business to work. I need my career to be my career my history career and that's what I'm going to now do I'm going to sit here and I'm going to apply for the jobs that I want to and work my ass off and I have to do that by July because by July I don't have the project to support me anymore and then I don't know what I would do and I told this to Shelley and she said whilst I'd be so upset to lose you it's what you need to do but the fact that you're willing to put somebody else in your job place proves that such an amazing friend you are. So that's that.
and I know that people from that place that are my true friends will stay in contact and we'll still go to London and we'll still go out and get drunk or we'll just have a quiet night in because they are true friends <clears throat> and yesterday I went to see the boyfriend and um, it was the first time I'd seen him for a while I went over there and the flat was absolutely disgusting and I was exhausted and I was falling asleep on the sofa and he said well, why don't you just stay and I said you know what that would be so much easier but when was the last time you changed your bed sheets and he said not for a while and I said change your bed sheets and I'll stay and I'll take you to work tomorrow and that's that he went okay I will so he wandered off for 20 minutes um, which I thought he was changing the bed sheets fine and then I went to him, what have we got for dinner? He went, oh, I've got nothing in because I'm going away in a couple of weeks. So I didn't really want to do any shopping, so I've been having takeaway. And I went, I'm not paying. I've paid for you for too long. And he went, no, it's fine. I'll buy. So he bought Chinese. And I sat down and had a conversation. I said, I need my money back. This is £600 um, that I need to invest in my company, in my future. Um, and he has said that he will give it to me in January. So we'll wait and see till then. And then we sat there and we watched TV, we watched a movie, and then we decided to go to bed. And I got into bed sheets and I went, these are clean, are you? And he went, oh no, I couldn't be bothered in the end. Which makes me feel so effing disgusting. And he makes me so angry. He'd also turned around and said that he's heading to his parents up in Norfolk. Um, and did I want to go up for New Year and then I could bring him back because he's only bought a single ticket. I'm not his taxi, I'm not his personal taxi, I'm not doing it. Um, so I think I'm just going to go to Plymouth and say no sorry, I'm not going to. Um, and I said well, what time have you got to be in work? And he went oh 11 but I want to go in early. So I was expecting to drop him off at 10 o'clock and I could be back home, get on with the ironing, get on with the various emails and bits that I need to do because we've been working hard on the project and um, just, just away in the background which we need to do for the next like month and a bit. And no, the alarm went off at half past 10, he got up, didn't wake me up, got ready and at 11 o'clock he went, oh can we go now? And I was like, well I've not had anything to eat and I've got nothing to eat. I was like, fine get in the car, I dropped him off at work and I came home and I felt disgusting, absolutely disgusting and filthy so I had to go for a shower and then breakfast and then, but he delayed my day from starting from like two hours and that makes me so angry that he has no idea of the impact of him and in anyone else's life and I find that frustrating because I'm always told that everything I do, I think about everyone else, the impact on them before myself. And it's the way I was brought up. And then you get people that just think it's okay to treat some everybody as their personal slave. So I don't know anymore and I think we've come to the decision that we will wait until the new year and then sit down and discuss it because I don't think the relationship is healthy um, and things do need to change. And I guess that's kind of where we're at. Um, the chaos in the house is because my great aunt who lives in a home, um, bless her, not through choice. Um, there are complications with my one of my uncles um, who, let's not go into that because that's very personal. Um, we invited her here for Christmas so she didn't have to spend Christmas in the home um, and she jumped at the chance. So we've had to do a bit of rearranging. So normally this would be my office um, and the room next door would be my parents and in here was like a day bed um, but what we've decided to do was put all of the desks in this room for once um, and then that room is just a bedroom for her it looks really super cute um, and cozy for her and I hope she likes it um, but yeah it does mean a bit chaotic in this room because it means if I need to do work I have to be very conscious of dad doing work or such and such but um, to be honest I'm not here that much at the minute I head down to Plymouth on Thursday, um, I, I'm really excited to see the guys down there, I need just a full on break of all of the chaotic and the I don't know anymore up here, um, so I'm going down there to see Kez, um, Kez Mark, uh, Liz and Dave and get my tattoos finished, so um, I've spoken about this very briefly before, I have seven tattoos, um, I have on my right thigh a big phoenix which is absolutely beautiful um, but at the moment it's just a black and white outline 
so that's going to be finished I'm so excited for it it's going to be amazing it's meant to symbolize this whole new start which is what I'm going for at the minute um, and also on my arm so you'll be able to see this today um, it says honor to whom honor is due um, I had it done last year and I've never felt it was quite complete so if we have time so fingers crossed and um, this will become this beautiful um, piece of remembrance um, so we'll have some big poppies on and I want to try and work in there my uh, company initials somehow I'm not sure that's a conversation to have with my tattooist when I see it on Friday um, and then the Saturday will be a bit of shopping I'm sure and uh, we can't go to Plymouth without a bit of shopping uh, and then in the evening we are having Christmas um, so it's Christmas jumpers, Christmas meal, um, Christmas movies, uh, presents and just a few drinks with some very very good friends um, who I am almost at the point of saying I want to go back to Plymouth um, but I moved away because of the horrible memories and you know weekends seem to be enough for me but I think it's that constant backwards and forwards between things going right up here and things going awfully wrong and they are going more wrong than right at the moment and I know the only person that can change that is me and that's what I'm working on um, so I just wanted to do an update to you guys I really do hope that you're all well and that you know times if they're hard you've got people you can rely on because that can make the difference between making your worth your life worthwhile I know at the moment my darkest thoughts are do you know what everyone else's life would go on without me here and yes they might be upset for a few days but life would go on um, and potentially be easier because they wouldn't have me moaning all the time um, I laugh about it now but it is a horrible place to be in um, and I wouldn't want anyone to be there without any form of support. It's not nice. I've been there before. And I'm trying to stop it happening to the point that it was before. Um, and that's why we've raised this red flag at the moment. And um, I guess we just have to see from there. Like I say, I hope you're all well. I hope you are all looking forward to Christmas. I certainly am a bit of time with the family. A bit of downtime for me as well. Um, next year is going to be chaos. And how I control that chaos... Um, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, I think we need to up things with the company and me on Twitter and, and potentially YouTube. Um, so come New Year, you may see a reset on this. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but like I said before, I find this downloading to a camera really useful. Whether anybody watches it, I don't know. Last week I uploaded, I did do like a five minute thing on my phone that I was going to upload which was just relaxation and reflection and that's what it really was last week and I thought I was in a good place and then this weekend happened or Thursday happened and today happened and now I just feel like I have two people in my life that are really controlling it. Um, one person I want in my life but probably in the never, never in the way that I need them to be um, and the other is it really worthwhile um, and those are the decisions that I'm going to have to take and they're tough decisions they have the potential to change our whole world and not just for me so we shall see I think the intention for work is I'm going to apply for a couple of jobs that have come about in the history field and, and get my head into that um, whilst working at getting him into the right team where he'll be supported like I have been um, and then I can just walk away from it I think that's potentially the best thing that I can do is just walk away from the situation. So we shall see. Um, I will try and find next time next week to update you. After that, I think we're actually... It would be Christmas Day. Um, and I won't be uploading Christmas Day, but I will try and upload something before then. Um, I don't know. I guess things are getting very raw at the minute. And that's not the best thing. I need to readjust and I need to find a way of getting what I want from life and stop settling for making sure everyone else is happy there's no harm in wanting to be happy for yourself. <sighs> Apologies for the look, um, as I say I had the shower this morning and I just thought you know what I'm going to get into comfy clothes and that means I can get a lot done and not worry about it um, and there is no makeup and I'm not really sure what's happening with the hair because I just let it dry naturally and there is no pink in it as you can still see um, but for the minute I just don't want to be the one that stands out in the, in the crowd I just want to be invisible for a little bit of time um, so yeah 
I will see you before Christmas, I hope. Um, if not, have an amazing Christmas. I hope your shopping is going well. I think I'm doing better than I thought I was. Uh, a few bits I got this weekend. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else for me to say. So we'll leave it there. I'll speak to you later.